who follows the one who leads into the schism does not inherit the kingdom of God. The church schism having existed in our country for more than 25 years is now not only a church phenomenon but also a social one. The existence in these two planes allows schismatics themselves to overlook certain ecclesiastical moments by holding up to view a social-political aspect of their activities. Shifting to politics means leaving aside the canons and laws of God. One can call itself a church, one can claim to be treated as a legal religious organization. One can perform religious rites, hold services, be in the public and media eye wearing church vestments and be a fully fledged church in the social and political terms. One can even count their parishioners and engage in comparing statistics. But does this mean being a church in fact? According to St. John Chrysostom, to make splits in the church is no less evil than to fall into heresy. The sin of the schism is not washed away even by the martyr blood. The holy churches are not as tolerant in their statements about schism as modern religious scholars, politicians, statesmen and others. For, by the laws of God, a split is a sin and nobody tries to hide this truth, to smooth it, to consider it discriminatory or offensive. It is a fact that cannot be silenced, muffled, or replaced by abbreviation. If you have committed the sin of split, you are a schismatic, and this cannot be modified by the strengths of your patriotism or connections in the highest echelons of state power. Yet, the so-called clergy of the Kiev Patriarchate are not particularly delighted when called schismatics. Let them not deceive you. And the parishioners of this church even consider this insulting. But if you call your organization an Orthodox Church, you should be prepared to be measured by the standards of this church. This is Anatoly, who served in the Church of the Kiev Patriarchate two months ago with the name Hieromonk Ilya. He had his small parish in the city of Korosten, Shitome region, and was quite a typical priest of the UOCKP. Many people begin to dislike the policy of the Kiev Patriarchate because people see that the church is very heavily politicized. They keep talking about flags, about national consciousness, national culture and so on. It's all good, but already too much. People do not distinguish church from state, church from politics, whereas the church should be beyond politics. There happens something that is not very common for the Kiev Patriarchy to make a parade of. Their priests decided to repent of the sin of schism and go to the bosom of the canonical church. At some point, I realized where the church is and where the political organization is. The so-called Church of the Kiev Patriarchate is basically built on these political grounds. Only in Ovruchi Eparchy this is the fifth time when the priest of the Kiev Patriarchate has returned to the true Church. In our Eparchy it is already the fifth case when the priest has passed to our canonical Church from the schismatic one. A person is saved in the church, and those priests who returned to us, they had understood this. And what is curious, when they repent, they say they have lifted up some burden from their soul, the burden of schism, and the soul is rejoicing. But as Anatoly says, not everyone who realizes his sin of schism has a nerve to repent, and there are many reasons for this. Some do not repent because of the benefits, some out of political reasons, out of fear, how will they be accepted in the canonical church, others because of media stories. There were such priests who doubted the truth of the UOCKP, but after my transition, these people still cannot take this decisive step, although they do have doubts. They cannot do this step, although they are doubtful. 
It would seem all right, like people do not understand much, do not read and know so much from theological literature about the sinful nature of schism. Moreover, the UOCKP priests do not often mention this in their sermons. However, the clergy themselves are supposed to read something, right? To know about this? And as ministers of the Church understand that they go to the opposite side of salvation and lead their flock to spiritual death. They wound themselves with these sins. When you look at them, you see they do not have this peace and calm in their souls. I feel sorry for the people who follow these priests. These people choose schism due to their ignorance and misunderstanding. Our duty as priests and bishops is to instruct people so that they would be saved in the Holy Canonical Church. As Anatoly himself tells us, not very many KP priests turn out to be engaged in reading theological literature. Their minds are fed with constant promises of their leader about the imminent recognition of their church. I not only read, but also tried to talk with my brethren, with people who graduated from the academy talked about it in the Yeparchy. And when I asked the question if they really believe that the Kiev Patriarchate is a canonical church, if there is a chance that this church would receive Thomas of recognition, if the Moscow church is truly canonical, they answered me, are you a Moscow too? It was the only answer to my doubts and anxieties. And this answer was of a national character, but not theological. It was the thing that caused Anatoly to think about the veracity of the speeches of Patriarch Filaret. Can everybody around be wrong and only he alone know the truth? I want to wish the clergy of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of the Kiev Patriarchate to think about all this, because there is no confirmation of what Filaret says. Could it be that all the universal patriarchs, the whole ecumenical church, are mistaken when saying that the Kiev Patriarchate is not a church, and only the Kiev Patriarchate itself says that it is a church? If you put these two points of view on the scales, then there are no questions as for the truth. Actually, due to this, I took a final step. On the side of the local Yeparchy of the KP, they decided not to go on much about this case. First, they published an order where it was said that Hieromon Ilya had been dismissed from the post of parish priest and was forbidden in ministry. Herewith, it is not indicated in what connection and on what grounds. After a while, the news was published in which Anatoly's repentance and his quitting the schism is portrayed as a radar capture of the temple. The latest events, when Jatomir Yepaki of the Kiev Patriarchate placed untruthful information about me on my site, became an extreme point. People with whom I communicate, when I read this official position of the Church, the organization which calls itself a Church, told me there is not a word of truth in it. Hieromong Ilya could not leave without speaking to the people he felt his responsibility before them and duty to tell what conclusions he came to and why he decided to leave the Kiev Patriarchate. When I decided that I would move to the canonical church, I immediately thought of those people who remain in the schism. If the Kiev Patriarchate, and this is true, is not a canonical church and it does not lead people to salvation, then it is my duty to explain to these people that I was mistaken and now they are also mistaken. One must repent and come to the true church in order to receive this salvation. 
The Church itself exists only for the sake of one thing, for the sake of saving a soul. The official website of the UOCKP of Jatomir Yepaki tries to convince his viewers that Anatoly did not get any response from the hearts of his former parishioners, and only three people passed with him. But the reality is always is slightly different than what the representatives of the UOCKP would like you to see. Most of the parishioners followed me, and a small part remained. On the official website it is said that only three people have transferred, while in fact it is more than 13. If 20 people regularly went to the church and 13 passed, then count how many there are left. When they said that Father Ilya is leaving, we were shocked. But I know that this was a well-thought decision, and we followed him. Everyone has the right to choose. We chose to go with him, as those who stayed also have the right to do so. No one condemns their choice, but I would like to see everybody fine, and everybody having enough love and respect for each other. Now Anatoly is preparing to become part of the canonical church. He reads and learns a lot. Returning to the bosom of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, he found an opportunity to live as he wanted and to do what he wanted. He might begin to write icons and go to Assis. In one day, not as a schismatic layman, but as a monk of the canonical church. Because when being in schism, he could not do so. Reading spiritual literature, for example, the Asanite elders, the Valaam elders, the Optina, the Solovets. I had thoughts of going to some monastery. And I thought if I went there, then what would I do for them? And this thought did not leave me. I realized they would not accept me there as a priest, much less as a monk, and it would be the same all over again. So, if the ecumenical church considers me an ordinary person who has no spiritual dignity, then why should I think of myself as a priest then? Now he has found peace in his soul, he has found peace in the church, where he was met with love and fatherly affection. After I had passed to the canonical church, calmness came to my heart. In the modern world, a huge number of religious organizations can mislead a man who is searching for God and salvation with all his soul. These organizations can have a lot of money, powerful influence, a correct political course, many religious buildings, flexible rules, but none of these makes them a true church, a church of God, rather than a secular one. Anatoly told us today his story, the story of how he sought the truth and found it. Not far from the temple, where Hiram monk Ilya recently served, a new temple is being built, where a new priest will already serve in truth, who now knows that he is on the right road, and along this road leads his flock. <laughs>